One of the most important things for understanding network structure is understanding user attributes and their behavior. So we have a lot of statistics and we know how to do a lot of analysis about the network as a whole, but oftentimes that doesn't get us to the real insights about what's going on with the network. To get there, we need to learn what's going on with the individual nodes and edges because that reveals a whole other level. This is really the crux of doing social network analysis. Certainly there are insights that you can get just by doing statistics on the network structure. And there are insights that can come from ignoring the structure entirely and just doing qualitative analysis on the members of the network. But what I think is really the most important thing about modern social network analysis is that you can take the quantitative structural analysis that we've learned to do and combine it with a qualitative analysis of the nodes and their relationships and put that together to give you some deeper insights. So let's start with some examples. Here's a network and I want you to just make some notes to yourself about things that you can see in this network. There's no sizing here, there's no other attributes shown on the nodes. We've just shown the nodes with their edges with a force directed graph layout. So nodes that are closely connected or have a lot of edges between them are appearing more closely together. So there's clearly three clusters that appear here. One at the top, one in the middle, and one on the side. But that's about all we can say from this network. We can't give any real insight into what's going on. So that leads us to say, if we want to understand more deeply what's happening in this network, we need to look at the nodes themselves and find out what they mean. So if I want you to figure out what's going on in this network, I'm going to give you some hints about where it came from. First is that the network was built from the photo sharing site Flickr. Some of you have probably used Flickr, but if you hadn't, it's a way that you can upload your photos. And on Flickr, you can label those photos with tags. These are just descriptive keywords that describe what's shown in your picture. In the graph I just showed you, the nodes represent tags. So each node is a tag. And an edge between the tags indicates that those tags were used to describe the same image. So for example, if I have a picture of my dog sitting outside after it snowed, I may tag the image with dog and with the word snow. And in this graph, the, t the nodes for dog and snow would have an edge between them because they were used on the same image. This is an interesting point to reflect on back to the previous lecture where we were thinking about how you build a network. If you look at Flickr, you have lots of things that could be nodes. It could be photos, it could be tags, it could be users, and there's a lot of things that could represent edges. We've picked one network here where the tags are the nodes and s tagging on the same image represents an edge but it's interesting to think that there's a lot of other ways to represent that data. So going back to this image, our nodes are tags, our edges mean they were used on the same image, and the network that we're looking at is the 1.5 egocentric network of a single tag. So what that means is I went to Flickr and I did a search for a single word, one tag. I pulled out all the other tags that that was connected to. So, for example, if I had searched for dog, it would pull out snow from the previous example, and it would pull out any other tags that had been used on at least one image that was also tagged dog. And I've done this as a 1.5 egocentric network, so I've connected all of those tags that appeared with my search term that were also appearing on at least one image together, and I've removed my core search term from the network because it would be connected to every other tag and that would make it hard to see what's going on. So what can we say knowing that? Again, as a reminder, here's the network. So we're looking at tags as nodes and edges indicating that they were used on the same image. And all of these tags were used with the one central search term that I looked for. So it would be useful to know what that central search term was and what each of these tags are. So here's our network. I'll put a higher resolution version of this on the lecture notes. And you can also check it out in the book. And what you can see is that in the upper cluster, we have words that pretty much indicate that we're looking at a computer mouse. So we've got computer terms and things relating to desks and keyboards and offices. In the lower group, in the middle, we have words that indicate that we're talking about
cats and mice and features of those mice. So there we're really talking about the animal, a mouse. And finally, this group on the side is talking about kingdoms and Disney, and this becomes Mickey Mouse. So you have a computer mouse cluster at the top, a mouse animal cluster in the middle, and a Mickey Mouse cluster on the side. And our original search term here, obviously, was mouse. So all of these terms were used with the word mouse one place or another. We've taken mouse out of the network, and now we see three clear clusters of different types of mice that appear. So this is a good example to indicate how we can connect content and structure. The structural attributes only tell us a little. In that example, we could clearly see three clusters, but those clusters didn't tell us a lot about what was happening in the network. We need to look at data about the nodes and the edges to really understand what's happening in a network. So if you say something like node X has high betweenness, that's really only a description of the statistic. What we want to do is go further to give a reason and an explanation. So node X has high betweenness and data shows he connects a group of people from the US with a group of people in Spain. That gives us an indication of what his role is and why he's important. So let's do another example analysis. What can we see in this network? Here, there are two obvious clusters and some other things going around on the outside, but generally there's two major clusters that are appearing. To give you some details, this is another 1.5 egocentric network of a search term, but this time it was on YouTube. The nodes represent videos that have the search term, either in their description or in their labels, and the links indicate videos that share at least one other keyword in common. So these are videos that have something in common if they're linked together, because that link represents one keyword that they share. And so we can see there's a cluster of videos here that share keywords in common, and another cluster here. So what could this represent? So more data for you. The search term that I used is cubs. So I searched for the word cubs on YouTube, and it returned this graph. Any initial thoughts about what we're seeing in the network? So you may have a theory about what's actually appearing, but I want to show you a little more in detail how we might probe that more deeply. So let's get into the content at the graph level. Here we have videos. We don't just have tags, so we can't just show the video. Uh, what we're going to do is choose a few videos from each cluster, watch them and read the description, see what they're about, look at their keywords, and that's going to be a way of sampling some of the data to give us an idea of what's going on. So here's our network again, and you can see that I have five white nodes that I've chosen from this cluster, and five black nodes I've chosen from this cluster. I've just randomly chosen these nodes, and we're going to look at the details of those videos. So we have five white nodes and five black nodes. Here are some keywords from the white nodes. Uh, there's one point here for each node that I've picked. And you can see that all of these are really dealing with baseball and the Chicago Cubs in one way or another. Either the game, MLB, which appears a few times, or just videos about the Cubs in general. So this gives us a pretty good indication that that cluster from which I pulled the white nodes is about the Chicago Cubs. Here are keywords from the black nodes. So you can see we have a lot of animal terms appearing. Dogs, puppies, bear cubs, polar bears, tiger cubs. So that other cluster is really talking about animal cubs as opposed to the Chicago Cubs. So conclusions that we can draw from this is that the cluster of nodes with the white samples represents videos about the Chicago Cubs. The cluster with the black samples represents videos about baby animals. This gives us some real insights into the process of looking at structure and then following that structure to look at content. So let's look a little bit more at analyzing the node level. Individual nodes can represent different types of things in a network. And we've sort of seen that in these previous two examples where the tags were talking about different general subjects, computer mice, Mickey Mouse, the animal mouse, or the Chicago Cubs versus animal cubs. 
but we may not have a distinction that clearly where we have really different topics. But individual attributes of the nodes can still be really useful for understanding a network. So here's a network of email communication in a company. The nodes here are people and they're colored based on which department that they're in. And the edges indicate that one person has emailed another. Now we have colors all over the place, but you can see the colors are pretty well grouped. We've got the blue group up here. We have a purple group in here, a pink group over on the side, an orangey group on the bottom. So people are emailing others from different departments, but there tends to be a lot of email within departments. There's a lot of connections within individual colors. So this is a simple way of taking one attribute that we know about nodes, plugging it into our network and using that for color coding, and that helps us see patterns in the network which otherwise wouldn't appear at all. The next example is one that I want you to probe more deeply. I'm going to give you an overview here, but on the lecture for today, I've assigned you to read the paper that this is based on. So this is a study by Wessler, Gleave, and Smith. And incidentally, the Smith here is Mark Smith, who is one of the creators of the Node Excel program, which we've mentioned for doing visualization in class before. And they did work looking at the roles that users play in discussion groups. So here's an example network we have. This is a network of a discussion board. Nodes are people, and edges indicate that people have responded to one another. Here the node size reflects the node's out degree. And we can't really tell a lot about the network beyond just those structural characteristics. So we can see that we've got some nodes with a high out degree sort of in the center. We have some nodes with a low out degree on the outside. But that's about all we can see. In this paper, the researchers decided to break this network down into egocentric networks. So for every node, they built the 1.5 degree egocentric network and looked at those all together. So here's an example of some that I've pulled out. These are some of the nodes from the previous slide, broken down to their 1.5 degree egocentric networks. And the middle node is always the one whose ego net that we have. So it's a little hard to tell on these bottom nodes, but on the top here, we can always see there's a central node, and that's the node whose egocentric network we're looking at. So we see a lot of different things here. Some of these nodes have a really high degree. Some of these nodes are connected to people with a high degree. And then we have other nodes, like this white one, that's connected to one person with a high degree, and that's it. So if we looked at all of the egocentric networks pulled out of that one bigger graph, we might be able to start identifying patterns. For example, in this network, 36 nodes have only one neighbor, and in almost all of those cases, that neighbor has a high degree and has replied to the central node. So that's an example like here. We have this little node in the center, its only neighbor is this one node with a really high degree. And if we go look at the discussion board, this big node has replied to something this original node posted. There's another 17 nodes who have the same pattern, but they have two neighbors instead of just one. These nodes, these single nodes that are responded to by a node with a high in degree, account for nearly 60% of all the nodes in the network. So that's important if we were looking at all the egocentric networks, we'd have a lot of networks that look just like this. If there's so many of those, that leads us to question, is there something that these nodes have in common? To do that, we want to dive into the content. So we want to group nodes by the attributes of their egocentric network, like their nodes with a low degree that have one or two connections to nodes that have a high degree who've responded to them. That gives us a pattern. And then we want to look at the behavior of those nodes in the discussion groups to see if there's actual patterns in the behavior. This involves actually reading the posts and understanding the communication on a content level. So we're not just looking at the network structure to say, oh, there's a lot of nodes that just get replied to. We want to look at the content and see what's happening there. So here's some of the things that they found in this research. Nodes that have a high out degree and low network density, which means their neighbors tend not to have connections to one another, tend to answer a lot of questions, but not engage in a lot of discussion. The authors sometimes call these answer people. The role that they play in the network is really to come in and answer questions, and that's it. Nodes with low degrees are generally asking questions. They post a question, they get a reply, and then they stop participating. So there's almost no discussion except that one reply that they get. 
And there's a lot of other patterns found by researchers that include things like starting flame wars, people who deep discussions. So I want you to read the paper to get some of those details. But the point here is that there's several levels deep that we're going in the analysis of this network. We take the original network we saw, we break that into 1.5 degree egocentric networks, and then from those networks we group nodes together based on similarities in that egocentric network structure. And then we go into the actual discussion boards that were used to generate that network and look at the behavior of the nodes to see if there's commonalities in the behavior that can explain the commonalities in the structure. And it turns out that you can get really interesting insights from this. And this paper was one of the pioneering pieces of work on combining network structure and network behavior to understand the roles of users in a network. So overall conclusions here is that to understand a network, we need more than just the structural attributes. We want to connect structure with analysis of content to lead to deeper insights about what's happening in a network. And this is really critical for a full, deep, and insightful network analysis.